dance called Pay It No Mind. Now you had a film festival here where you saw a documentary by David France, which was a million dollar movie that was actually inspired by this $8,000 personal work of love. And I also want to bring you greetings, not of love, but of hope and militancy from Sylvia Rivera, who in my early days when I knew nothing about gender identity, I was a stupid transphobe. And through experiences of having Marsha B. Johnson live with me for 12 years and be the house mother of my extended gay family, obviously I realized what an idiot I was. And Sylvia Rivera and I went from being arch enemies for 20 years from 1970 into Marsha's funeral in 1992 to be in the best of friends. She lived with me. I hired her. She was first the employee of my store, then she was the manager of my store. She finally got off of drugs. Her story is a story of redemption. She was a prostitute at 12. She was a drug addict. She was an alcoholic. Finally, she found love. She sobered up. She got a job giving away food at the food pantry at the MCC Church in New York City. And unfortunately, and I was there when I saw her pull together the five people from Philadelphia and the 12 people from Boston and the other people from Baltimore and the people from Washington. And she organized the first march that was specifically for trans rights in the United States. And fortunately, she lived long enough to be flown to Italy at the Millennium. They had a Millennium March where they had all these people come in. And she got to speak like early evening. They had talks all day. And early evening, thousands, she was heralded as the mother of the trans movement in the world. And she was spoken at around 8 or 9 o'clock at night. And thousands of people came to hear her speak. And she said, I never knew I had so many children. And what I'm telling you right now is that when I joined the Mattachine Society, in New York City, we had 16 members, but the real activists were four or five. And in the entire nation, they, what ultimately became the LGBT movement, did not have as many activists as are in this room tonight. I'm here to tell you that I have lived the American dream. I've, when I started, we were criminals in every state except Illinois. We were considered mentally ill. And I was fortunately one to break into radio and TV and the first to demonstrate for homosexual civil rights in the United States. And then I went on to fight for women's rights, right to abortion, freedom of choice against the war in Vietnam, integration, and all of these things. And now I, I just want you to know, I had to have my sentences in mind because I know you're here to meet each other, not to hear me blabber on. But I want you to know that the future is yours because we, people like you, less people than you, we change the world. I'm the last of the Mattachinos. You'll probably never hear another person talk who was active in 1958. If there are any people that were still alive that were alive, then I'm five months from being 80. And I want to tell you that the future is yours, and you're going to do it. And the world that you are making today is a continuation of the world that people in my generation started to make. <laughs> to see all you beautiful people in this room just fills me with such a sense of satisfaction. And I'm so happy that you're here. And I'm so thrilled that, that you allowed me to speak to you. <laughs> I love you all. And if you ever need support or help or any way I can be of help, please let me know. And Godspeed and good luck.